Ionic 5 starting to taper lower, Volvo holding that a little bit longer, but it's a lower state of charge, so you're still waiting to get to your 70% here. Welcome back to Plug and Play V, I'm Steve, and in this one we'll be looking at fast charging in the Volvo XC40 Recharge. We did the trip up to Lake Placid and the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York recently, and we've had the first impressions video. Uh, this one we'll look at charge times, the charge profile and curve of the 2023 Volvo XC40 Recharge, and what we might come to expect from the 2024 upgrade. So let's not waste any more time, let's jump into charging the Volvo XC40 Recharge. So although this is an episode of Quick Charge and we won't take too long on it, we will mostly focus on DC fast charging, it's worth noting that in Lake Placid and the Adirondacks as a whole, level 2 destination charging was really widespread and we had a lot of options there to just charge overnight, whether it was downtown Lake Placid, Mount Van Hovenberg, some of the areas where we visited for 2, 3, 4 hours at a time were really good places to get a bump charge and have enough to go about our day. So with that said, we did have 3 DC fast charging sessions that were of uh, DC decent length to get a feel for the Volvo XC40 Recharge and its current profile. Uh, so let's jump into how it charges, peak and the taper, and also a simultaneous charging session on EVgo with the Hyundai Ionic 5. So our first elongated session was at the Clifton Park Evolve New York site and that was a stop after driving from Boston all the way through the Mohawk Trail up into the eastern part of New York State and then up I-87. Volvo XC40 Recharge is supposed to top out around that 150 kilowatt point. We did actually see 154 from it so got a little bit above. Although it was a Shell Recharge station um, you can activate that through the roaming agreement they have with ChargePoint through that app and that gives us this paragraph that we see here. So what probably jumps out at you right away is the 43 cents. There's definitely something going on with the billing there, which I'll uh, take up with Evolve New York. But see, we've got that very clear triangle kind of peaking up at 154 kilowatts after a few minutes, and then just gradually tapering down through the 140s, 130s. And as you get to a higher state of charge, you're seeing double digits as opposed to the triple digits that we're used to in the Ionic 5 at those 70, 80% states of charge. People certainly moan about double digits and being derated on the likes of Electrify America at that level. It wasn't actually that bad. We had a lunch stop, it took 34 minutes, and we got around 55 kilowatt hours back here. So we got a good chunk of the battery back there. And that 34 minutes was plenty, and we actually ended up getting ice cream, so I was waiting for the kids rather than them waiting for the car. So the next one was the really interesting one. And again, because of the destination charging, that's what we used whilst we were staying there for the long weekend. Uh, we really didn't need fast charging. There is a uh, Involve New York location down in Keene, which is not too far from Lake Placid, but really no point to go down there, charge up and come back when you can uh, just plug in level two and let it just top up at those cheap local rates. It was something like 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So you're really gaining the benefit there of having cheap local electricity from hydropower and being able to just top that battery pack up when you're in town centers, attractions, sites, that kind of thing. But on the way back, we stopped at one of uh, the sites that is becoming a favorite now, the EVgo in East Greenbush, New York. And uh, this is kind of the first opportunity we've had to test the uh, simultaneous charging. So some of the old Delta 100 kilowatt units are out there. They've had simultaneous charging for a while, but they typically have a CHAdeMO head. Uh, so you need a Nissan Leaf really to be able to test that alongside uh, whatever CCS EV that we're driving at the time. These ones were the 350 kilowatt units so we were able to use both of the CCS heads plug into Chepi here and uh, get a pretty good look at the full session as the Volvo XC40 recharge plugged in first and right after we used the auto charge on our Hyundai Ionic 5 to see how those balanced out. Now in theory they should split that 175 kilowatts equally and that's not going to quite max out the uh, Ionic 5 but there is a little power left on the table if you think the Volvo XC40 recharge at its peak is only doing 100 150, 155 kilowatts maybe, and then tapering down fairly quickly. That's not actually what we saw. So you'll see here how it varied and how the Ionic 5 still came out in front, but uh, did take a little longer than it would have done had we just plugged the Ionic 5 in for a non-simultaneous charging session. 
In terms of charging, it's pretty clear when uh, the Hyundai Ionic 5 on you know a separate charger would have knocked out the session that we did in around 20 minutes. Uh, took closer to 23, 24 minutes in the end to get to where we wanted to be, even after starting a minute or two be, uh, after the Volvo XC40 and then not getting the full power that you would expect, not even getting up to the 175 kilowatt split, actually starting closer to that 120, 130 kilowatts. It still held that for longer and then surged to kind of around that 150 kilowatt level and held it to the point where it's getting to 70 80 percent and that's when you're starting to think about leaving in uh, pretty much any ev unless it's got a very flat curve all the way up to 100 and the Ionic 5 kind of beat out the XC40 recharge in that. So again, we were stopping here. There were a bunch of us. We stopped at a Starbucks and it was really not a case where we needed to watch it. I watched it because we were wanting to look at the simultaneous charging. But in the end, uh, the difference of kind of 10 minutes there, you can say that it's too long if you're traveling solo or maybe just a couple of you wanting to get back on the road and obviously didn't max out the uh, capabilities of these uh, 350 kilowatt stations. But, you know, reality is 10 minutes when you're sitting down for a coffee isn't all that long but it did emphasize the uh, advantage that the EGMP platform cars and others have with that 800 volt system and uh, above the legacy kind of 150 kilowatt level that a lot of these uh, Volvos, Polestars and everything kind of uh, sit at for the current year at least. And then our final session was just one to return the rental at a decent state of charge. Um, and this kind of was a colder day, so I wouldn't count it as representative necessarily. We topped out uh, in the low hundreds and uh, took a bit longer, but it kind of, the upper part of it emphasized how long it can take once you get to that 70% level. We saw this at the EVgo station as well, where we were getting around 6 p.m. and uh, it was on the kind of 70s at that point, but it was going to complete to 100% after 7 p.m. So obviously, we we know as good EV uh, citizens that you don't sit around on a fast charger to 100%, but if you were in a place, let's say, where you wanted to get to 85, 90% to uh, be able to go on to the next charger and maybe there's a big distance apart, if you're looking for something that really ekes out range or you live in areas where you will need to charge up to that kind of 85, 90% level in some road trips because of the distance between charges, this isn't going to be the car for you. It's got too long in that last little quarter of the pack to really really justify staying and uh, if you need it to get onto the next charger it's going to be a little bit of a pain. The percentages are almost equivalent and you can see why having uh, the ability to get that last 10-15% uh, in the Ionic 5 within a few minutes uh, versus 10-20-30 minutes or longer in the uh, XC40 recharge is uh, going to be a big difference maker on those longer trips. So the good news if you're in the market for a Volvo XC40 recharge in the next few months here is that you don't have to wait that long for the 2024 model, which will be uh, improved, especially in the terms of the battery pack a little bit, but also charging. So in terms of the battery pack, you're looking at going up from that original 78 kilowatt hours to the uh, 82 kilowatt hours. Again, that's nominal, so it's not going to be a huge amount here with a relatively inefficient vehicle, but you do also have a, a single motor version, which uh, will help you eke out some more miles as you're not getting so much of the performance that's for the next video really but uh, the charging is where this will improve as well as well as having that larger pack to put a little more energy into it it's going to up that maximum uh, peak rate from the 150 kilowatts stated to 200 kilowatts so again, we know that peak rate isn't the be-all and end-all. If it's got that gradual taper, instead of just going to work for as long as it can, cooling off and then going to work again, still, that's a significant uh, improvement there. And from Volvo's projections, that translates from a 10 to 80% time in the 2023 model that we tested of 37 minutes to 28 minutes for the 2024 Volvo XC40 recharge. So still in that 30 minute bracket, and uh, it does sound if they don't change the charge curve, like that last 20% will still be a bear, but you're going to be able to get to the 80% a little bit quicker you might not be um, so worried about waiting that extra few minutes to get to maybe 85% and you'll add a little bit more in because of that larger battery pack and if they maybe tweak the curve just a little bit so that it stays at the peak for that uh, a little bit longer than it currently does we'll start to see that significant improvement and really that under 30 minutes time is what we're looking to to get to that 80 percent and be on your way so perfectly capable in that sense but again it's not going to match the kind of uh, leading technology of the likes of the egmp or the cars that uh, can squeeze more out of a large battery pack 
So that's your quick charge breakdown of the Volvo XC40 recharge in 2023 with those promise of those upgrades to come in 2024. What do you think? Uh, was this enough of an upgrade to make you consider the Volvo XC40 recharge or is charging just not that big of a deal? You're fine with 30 minutes. Let us know down in the comments. Stay tuned for the comparison of the 2023 Volvo XC40 recharge with this vehicle, our 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 and uh, some of the similarities and pros and cons of each in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.